Hello and welcome to a demonstration of my DOS-like operating system that I've made in the span of about 3 months. Now this operating system has an 80 by 25 character VGA display with 16 color graphics. It has potential for external program execution with single processing. It all runs fully in ring 0, so in kernel mode. It has a functional shell and shell commands, as well as a read and write file system with no support for directories just yet. I have created an, um, an automake script here, which will build the OS as well as uh, compile all of the external programs here all these C programs I've written and write them to the disk. Automake. As you can see it writes them very swiftly and it's already done. Now it also prompts to write any more files to the disk and I will write a license file. And this is the GPL v3 license, which this operating system is licensed under. So now that has been written and it was converted to a VMDK format virtual disk. Now we can start it up in VirtualBox. And we are greeted with this blue boot screen. We have a log from the loader, which gives us some useful debug information on law on boot else gives us a kernel initialization message it initializes all the necessary uh, things uh, gives information about the license and where you can get the source code and a basic uh, welcome message here with the how to get started sentence I guess so uh, let's follow the instruction and type list.exe now, this will list all the files on disk, as you can see here, .exe files can be executed, and while that is uh, true in this case, it doesn't necessarily have to be an .exe file to be executable, it just needs to have the correct parameters inside the actual file. Now, uh, the list command gives us uh, information about how big the files are in bytes and uh, what order they were, they were created in, since they're not ordered alphabetically. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so let's uh, try out the commands here. Now the first command is cls, and that's uh, to clear the screen. And to execute a command you just type the name of the file in with the extension, and the screen has been cleared. Uh, if we just list the files once again, uh, we can also delete files, but we'll do that later. There's an append command, which uh, actually there needs to be a file that I can append to first, so the touch command is able to create a file. Let's do that. Uh, test.txt and it will create a file. Now if we uh, list .exe. We can see that the file has been created. Text test.txt here. And uh, yeah, now we can uh, we can read it if we want, although that the word that won't log anything since it is empty. It logs the program entry point here, which is just debug information in case something goes wrong with the processes. Uh, but if we append to it, so append.exe, and uh, it's going to be done pretty easily, just type the name of the file you want to append to first, and then the data, and this can have spaces in it. Uh, let's just do, this is a test file, exclamation mark. And it wrote 20 bytes to text.txt, it updated it in the file info, so if we execute list, it's updated here, now it's 29 bytes instead of 9. 
and uh, beforehand it was 9 even though it's an empty file because it also stores the name of the file inside it. Now if we read test.txt uh, no, read.exe test.txt uh, like that, it will read out the contents and it didn't actually have a new line character at the end so our shell prompt is on the same line and if we press enter or type in a a word that isn't recognized, it will give us a file doesn't exist message because all this shell really is is an interface that allows for the execution of commands or executable files uh, so now you may be wondering what happens if the file is really large like for example license that's uh, 35 kilobytes <clears throat> if we read license it will, uh, yeah, it's uh, unreadable because the scrolling teletype only scrolls one way and doesn't scroll backwards. Uh, however, we can read it in uh, steps. So read.exe in license, license, uh, zero. So this will read the zeroth. Uh, it reads it in 512 by 8 chunks and we are able to select the exact chunk it reads and the chunks are zero indexed so there it is right here the first chunk so we can read it in steps now we can read the, the second chunk which is number one and we can continue reading from the place that it stopped in the previous chunk and this is useful for large files, large text files now are there any more commands to demonstrate? oh of course the delete command, yes so del.exe is able to delete a file uh, let's delete test.txt, the one that we created before boom, file successfully deleted now list.exe and the file is gone so yeah, this is the demonstration of my operating system built completely from scratch <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something uh, finally I just want to show you something that's outside the operating system but is still very much useful. So I have two scripts here. Well, I guess one script and one uh, full fledged C program. And if we make clean here, this will delete all the build files and executables. Uh, we have, um, I'm just going to full screen the terminal here and zoom in. We have a <coughs> automic compile program and uh, also ESFS raw write dot C. Well, make compile that. So yeah, now that's compiled and we have it as an executable. Automic is really just an uh, automation for a combination of uh, make commands as well as this command and this. So it's not really worth talking about. I showed it at the start of the video. Now a compiled program will be able to create an executable that can be ran on the on my operating system, not on Linux. So <clears throat> say for example we list external programs we see all these uh, C files here and if we compile a program uh, first we need to input the source code file which is uh, uh, let's do let's do read.c and now we can type in the output file which let's make it read.exe now if we ls read.exe has been uh, put into this directory 
And there it is. So now this can be executed on my OS. But how do you get it on the disk? Uh, for that, we use the ESFS row write. So ESFS is the file system that my operating system uses, and it stands for even simpler file system because it is based on a file system called SFS, simple file system. ESFS works in a similar way to compile program. We can get a help message here if we run it incorrectly. So uh, for this to actually run, we need to make uh, clean, no, make raw, like this. This will compile a raw binary image of a drive. So it should be in, yeah, here, OS image.bin. It's a 10 megabyte virtual drive with the OS installed on it and no files. Uh, this cannot be booted in VirtualBox, but it can be booted in Kimu if we do make run. Like so. Now, uh, without getting sidetracked too much, if we do ESFS raw write, and we can now input the name of the file on the virtual disk, so read.exe, and uh, then the file on uh, the actual host machine, which is also read.exe. Incorrect syntax. Oh yes, we need to also specify the actual raw binary drive that we want to write onto. Like so. Now it wrote the the file. Uh, it wrote it sector by sector, so in 512 byte chunks as well. And now we can convert to VMDK. So the ESFS raw write cannot write to a VMDK file because the VMDK file is uh, has complex syntax and <clears throat> I'm not sure how to deal with it. So now we can convert it and uh, it's no longer writable externally, but we can boot it in VirtualBox here. Uh, the thing is, list.exe doesn't work now, so yeah, file doesn't exist, but we made a read.exe, so nah, that doesn't exist either. What did we make, actually? Yeah, we did make read. Uh, oh, it's a, I put a space accidentally. So here, it if we do space read.exe, yeah, so it will try to. Okay, you know what? This was a failure, but I guess we can touch test.txt. We can write to it though, but sure. And uh, space read.exe test.txt. Read.exe test.txt. Alright, doesn't matter. It's um, This whole thing failed. But you get the point, so we can write a file. Let me just redo this real quick. Make clean raw ESFS and ESFS raw write OS image.bin read.exe read.exe and uh, now Actually, let's compile uh, external programs append as well, since that is needed to write to a file. And we touch as well. So you can see these work hand in hand. It's harder to demonstrate one without using the others. So I have append, uh, read, and touch, but touch is messed up. Okay, so ESFS raw write OS image dot bin 
3.exe, read.exe, pen.exe, pen.exe, and touch.exe, touch.exe, make convert, and start. Now we can do touch.exe test.txt Alright, no, append.exe test.txt this is, this is a test and read.exe test.txt Boom, this is a test, okay. So, you get the point. Now the thing is going to rm everything that you've seen now and uh, make clean. And if we just vim into all the make here, you can see all this does is uh, runs the exact commands I did, just like with for loops here, because it's easier and more scalable. Then it converts it to your VMDK. So once again, this script just made to make my life easier to not have to run all the compilation scripts manually. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, and I'll continue working on my operating system and improving it.